Hey everybody, this is Devin Stevens with Net3. Uh, welcome to our how-to training today on how to work with files and recover files of the Kronos. Um, so we're going to be doing some file level recovery um, from a virtual machine. Um, kind of give you an idea of how to work with the product and what you can do with a with a file level recovery for, for a physical or a virtual, however you want to recover the machine. Um, Starting out, we're going to be working with a little domain controller and file server uh, that we have out here in our uh, demo environment. So it's just a little guy. Uh, we've got a folder here full of data that we're going to be working with. First thing that we're going to do today is, of course, we just need the data to recover. So we're going to go ahead and delete this uh, demo data folder right here and get him out of here so that we can kind of work with him and, and uh, show you what we can do. So once we've kind of deleted that, now we're going to come in and these are our restore points here uh, for Kronos. So we're in our recovery tab and we see the two backup locations that we have for this backup plan. Uh, we're backing up locally to a NAS as well as straight to cloud. Um, we're gonna do our restores here from straight to cloud. So uh, we can choose a restore point that we want to go back to. Um, I have this one that was, uh, it's a full backup, full machine backup, um, but we're gonna recover files and folders out of this guy. So we're gonna go ahead and click right there. The first thing that's going to happen, I do have encryption at rest uh, enabled on this box. So it's going to prompt us for the passphrase that we created uh, when we created the backup plan. So we'll go ahead and put that in and click OK. And it's going to show us the, um, the actual file system that is present within the backup file. All right, so we've got our file system here. Uh, shows each of the drives as well as the system uh, reserve drive here. So the, the file that we deleted was here on our C drive. And if we browse in, we see it's actually got a lot of different information in here that wasn't there before. So one of those is our demo data folder. Um, we can select the entire folder if we'd like to restore the entire folder, or we can browse in and kind of see all of the files that are located within there. So these are all the files that were located within that folder. If we check one of these guys, we've got two options here. We can recover or we can download it. If we download, this actually just pulls this file directly down to my machine. So this is gonna use the browser capabilities here to create this text file and pull it on down to my machine. So I can open this, I can get that to my end users, um, you know, to get that recovery done, I can email it to them or put it out on share it myself. Um, our other option is, of course, recovery. So when we recover, uh, we might want to recover at the folder level. So say we've got a file share or something like that. We've got a folder deleted. We're going to go ahead and choose this entire folder here and click recover. And it's going to go through the same kind of process. So um, basically what we're doing now is the agent is looking at this machine and it is preparing to recover the data. So it's checking you know, the file system, making sure that it has connectivity into the machine. And then once it's done, it gives us all of the options for our recovery. Uh, we can choose to recover to another agent. So if you have another agent sitting out there that you want to recover this data to, maybe it's uh, a new file server and you're doing a file server migration. You can choose that new agent and recover directly to that new file server. Um, we're going to go to the same guy. Um, and we have two options here, original location or custom. Original location is going to put this data directly back on the disk right where we found it, right? It's going to make no changes. It's going to go directly to the same place. Sometimes, though, whenever we're doing a recovery, we don't necessarily want to recover into the same place. Our users are already having trouble finding the data, uh, so we don't want to make that any harder on them than we have to. So we can go to a custom location. And when we browse out here, we get two options. We get local folders or network folders. In our case, we have a server, a file server sitting out here. Um, and we're browsing at this point on this local folder in the C drive, the live view of this machine. So if we come in and create a new folder here, and we can call this uh, maybe restore data and click OK. What that's going to do is it's going to create a folder called restore data on the machine itself. So this is a brand new, you know, created folder for us. We can recover at this point directly into there and not have any problems. We just tell our user, hey, look, it's now in a folder called restored data. Go ahead and, and navigate to that folder and, uh, and grab your file. However, um, sometimes we don't have a local file system. We just have a network folder. Uh, this would be, for instance, if you were restoring to a NAS. So if I want to take my data 
that I am restoring from a file server and I want to recover it into a NAS uh, system and just give it my IP address. It's going to ask me for credentials into this machine. And now I can start my recovery directly to that NAS. Right. Great for file migrations as well. If you're going from a uh, Windows based environment or a Linux based file server, uh, maybe serving up SMB into a NAS, uh, you can do this right here. Um, in our case today, we're going to go to the original location. Uh, I do want to recover some cover recovery options. One is we can validate the backups before recovery, just make sure that everything is recoverable and good. This does take time, uh, so we want to be careful about that. We can set a current date and time for all the files if we want to. Uh, if you want to differentiate them by date and time uh, and you don't need the original timestamps, this is a great option. Um, file exclusions is also an awesome option. This allows you to come in and say, I do not want to recover maybe MP3s. Um, maybe I don't want to pull any MP3s out and then recover those to my disk. Maybe that's a large portion of your file share or something. Uh, you can specify what those masks are and it will filter out the recovery, thereby making it a little bit faster. File level security can be recovered. Uh, full path recovery actually would create a full path saying like C colon backslash uh, whatever. You would have the entire path of the share uh, that gets recovered. Um, mount points, whether or not we want to recover those mount point targets. Uh, performance, you can set this low or high if you, maybe you just need it kind of running in the background or if you need it really quick. Um, you can run commands before and after the backup as well, and you can have it log events in the application event log, right? So maybe we want to catch all events. So once we set our recovery options, we just start recovery. And we have some options here about overwrites. Uh, if you're recovering into a previously populated file share, then maybe you don't want to overwrite any existing files, right? Or maybe, you know, you had a rollback on a file share and you need to overwrite them if they're older. You can do all that uh, or do not overwrite, it's your choice. I'm gonna go ahead and override any existing just so we get everything. And then we have an interesting little checkbox that is automatically checked by default. This is important to know. If that box is checked and you're doing a file restore, say of a file share or maybe a Windows data folder, um, if the file is locked at that time, what Acronis will do is reboot the server and restore the file before the OS boots. So it does cause an outage, right, if that happens. So you wanna be careful about that. Uh, if, uh, if you think you might have some locked files, maybe some users didn't get the message and they still have files open on the share or something like that, it will reboot the machine to restore those. So we're gonna go ahead and click proceed and that's gonna start off our recovery. Our recovery task will pop up over here on the right and show us recovering files. And in the file system, we should get some data. So here's our demo data folder and there's our file recoveries right there. Um, does a pretty good job. Uh, this is not a lot of data. This is about 900K, I think, uh, total. So we recovered in about 11 seconds from cloud. Not, not too shabby. Uh, 